Hello and welcome to this video. At the end of this video, we'll be able to interact with our NPCs and utilize the shop system UI that we made in the last video. So we're going to come over here. We can press E to interact with our NPCs. So we'll press E and it'll bring up the shop window. It's going to list all of the items that the shop has in stock. So you can see from our scriptable objects that there's 99 cogs, 10 health potions and one sword item in this shop. And the shop has a thousand gold available. So let's just jump straight into this video. Okay, so let's just continue where we left off. So in the previous episode, we'd set up the canvas um, and we'd made this shopkeeper display script, but it currently doesn't do anything. So let's make it do some stuff. Okay, so the first thing that it would make sense to do is actually to spawn the um, the items from the shop in our shop list on that left hand panel. So let's set that up first. So we'll do a public void display shop window. And in here, this will take in a shop system. We'll just call this, uh, oh, we'll just call that shop system. And we'll do player inventory holder, and we'll call this player inventory holder. So let's assign the um, shop system and the player inventory holder to some sort of like uh, script wide variables that we can kind of keep a reference to. So We'll do a private shop system and we'll call this uh, underscore shop system and we'll do a private player inventory holder and we'll call that player inventory holder. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get our shop system and we'll, we'll get underscore shop system and we'll equal this to shop system and underscore player inventory holder and we'll equal this to player inventory holder and then we'll refresh the display which is going to be a new method that we'll make so we'll do private void refresh display and the first thing we'll do here is we'll clear our slots so you'll notice this is seeming and this is sounding a little bit like the uh, dynamic inventory display and our um, static inventory display there's not really a huge amount of copied functionality like we don't need to be able to click on the slots or anything um so I didn't want to kind of have shopkeeper display derive from inventory display. But of course, there are um, some functions that are, of course, there are some stuff kind of in common. So for example, uh, clear slots, but we're not going to copy this over wholesale. I just thought I'd point that out. Um, I am aware that there's similar sort of naming, but they're not, they're, they're different enough to not kind of need to derive from uh, inventory display. So we're going to have uh, clear slots and this is going to be a private void clear slots. So this is going to loop through every uh, item in our um, item content list panel and the dot transform and then we'll do cast transform. So that's just like we're doing here, but we're doing it on our display. And we're going to destroy item dot game object. Then we're going to do the exact same thing again on the shopping car content panel. That's going to clear the slots. Um, and we actually need two dictionaries, which are going to keep track of um, what we have in our shopping cart. So let's come up here and we'll do um, private, oh, private dictionary which is going to take in an uh, inventory item data as well as an int. And this is going to be our shopping cart, which is going to be a new dictionary of inventory item data and int. And then we're going to have a private dictionary again of inventory item data. And this is going to be the UI kind of side of it. And this is going to take in our shopping cart item UI. And this will be the shopping cart and this will be the shopping cart, uh, I'll call it UI. So this is equal to a new dictionary. Of... So there's our two dictionaries. So as well as in, in clear slots, as well as deleting all of these items, we're going to clear out these um, lists, uh, these dictionaries as well. We're just going to delete them, make new ones, so replace them with these new um, dictionaries just to make sure they're nice and fresh. Um, so that's our clear slots function which we need in our refresh display and then we're going to disable the basket total text because obviously there won't be anything in the basket at first so we may as well disable it you could also just set it to zero um but i am going to set it uh, to false so basket total text dot enabled is equal to false i'm going to turn off the buy button so buy button dot game object dot set active false um we're going to make another int up here 
Uh, we'll do it. Yeah, so private int. And this is the basket total. This is going to keep track of how much our basket is going to cost. Um, so obviously when we're refreshing the display and the slots have been cleared, we can actually set that back to zero because we know there's nothing in the basket. So it won't be worth any kind of amount of gold. And we can refresh the text. So we can do player gold dot text is equal to um ring so player gold i'll set this equal to the player inventory holder dot inventory system dot uh, gold and i don't think we've actually implemented that yet so let's go over to the primary inventory system let's actually um serialize field private int gold so let's introduce the concept of gold to our inventory system and we'll do public int gold and we will return gold uh, our private int gold up here and then as well as this public inventory system constructor uh, we're going to make another one which can now give us some gold so public inventory system which will take in a size and a gold amount and here we can say uh, gold is equal to gold and then we will call our um here we say gold is equal to the gold amount that we've passed in and here we'll just set gold to zero as a default and i'm going to take this bit of code and i'm going to a private void uh, method called create inventory which takes in a size and then we can just say create inventory size and that down here as well so we've got two constructors now one just takes in a size one takes in some gold to give to the player so we've introduced the concept of gold to our inventory system let's go back over to shopkeeper display so we've now got gold so we're going to display the player gold and then we want to do the same but for the shop gold text and then we'll say shop gold and this will take from the shop system the available gold and i don't think that's um we haven't got a, a kind of getter for that so we'll just do public int available gold which will return available gold and then we'll go back over to our shopkeeper display and you can see that that's working there now okay so now we just want to uh, make another method and this one is going to be a private void display shop inventory um, and we're not going to use this one just yet, but I'm just going to make a uh, private void display player inventory as well, just while we're doing that. Um, so up in refresh display, let's call that. So display um, shop inventory. And all we're going to do in this method is we're going to loop through every item in our shop systems inventory. So a shop system dot uh, items, which I don't think we can get. Uh, it's this shop inventory here. We need to allow a getter for that. So public list of shop slots all shop inventory, which will allow us to get the shop inventory um, variable. Go back over here and we can say for every item in our shops inventory, if the item dot uh, item data is equal to null, then let's just continue because um, we only want to Populate. We only want to spawn in a slot if it's not null. Uh, and then we can say var shop slot is equal to instantiate the shop slot prefab underneath our shop list uh, panel. What's it called? Underneath our item list content panel dot transform. And then we can initialize the shop slot. So shop slot init. And this is going to pass in our item along with the shop system dot by markup which again we can't get i'm going to do a public float uh, by markup which will return the buy markup and then we may as well do the sell markup while we're here we will need to do that so this init function this is going to be on our shop slot ui um class that we made and never did anything with so Let's do a public void in it, which will take in shop slot and a float. So shop slot slot and float uh, markup. Okay, so let's work now on initializing our shop slot. So we'll go over to the shop slot UI class and we'll serialize field private image in Unity Engine UI uh, item sprite. We'll do serialize field private text mesh pro you gui item name and let's just uh, duplicate that 
to be item and we'll do a serialized field private shop slot signed item slot so in our awake function we're going to um, set the item sprite dot sprite equal to null uh, item sprite dot preserve aspect equal to true item sprite dot color equal to color dot clear item name dot text is equal to uh, just a blank string and item count dot text again equal to a blind string an empty string uh, we want our buttons as well so we want a um serialized field private button and this is the add to cart button so add item to cart as well as a remove item from cart button now all these buttons just so we know exactly what they are so to our buttons we're going to add some methods so we're going to say uh, add item to cart button and if it's not null we're going to uh, we're going to add a listener to the on click button and it's going to be an add item to cart method we've got remove item from cart on click we'll add a listener or we'll remove item from Art. and we can also get a private shopkeeper display let's call this parent display i'm actually going to make this public with a getter and private setter we don't need to assign that in the inspector so we're just going to do get private set parent display is equal to transform dot parent dot get component in parent Shop keeper display. Now let's make these functions here. So add item to cart. Let's create a method for that. And let's create a method for remove item from cart. Okay, so before we start hooking up these buttons and making them work, uh, let's get rid of these throw new not implemented exceptions. I'm going to make a private void um, update UI slot, which is going to take in shop slot, so shop slot, as well as the markup. So float price markup and i'm just going to move this init function up here just so it follows a bit more of a logical order so in our init function i'm just going to set our uh, assigned item slot equal to slot and call update ui slot passing in our shop slot and uh, markup and then in our update ui slot we can say if assigned item slot dot data is not equal to null just as a check we're going to say item sprite dot sprite is equal to signed item slot dot item data dot icon we can set the item sprite dot color equal to color dot white the item count dot be equal to the item slot the assigned item slot dot stack size dot who string and then the item name dot text is going to be equal to item slot signed item slot dot data dot display name and then for now we're just going to do um the item slot item data dot value so this isn't going to take into account the markup for now but let's just um Let's just get this in and working. And then here we can say uh, else. So if the item is null, and let's just uh, clear the slot out. So that's that there. Um, think about it. We don't actually need to pass in shop slot like that. Let's just get rid of those. Um, and then let's store this markup so we can use it later uh, in a public float um, markup again with a get and private set and here we'll just say markup is equal to markup just so we can access that down here when we do actually want to use the markup and then assigned item slot obviously we're setting here when we initialize it okay, and then just to make sure the buttons are getting um set up properly and kind of registered to these events let's just say uh, let's debug.log adding item to cart and then uh, removing item from cart okay so now on our ui controller here when we set our um, display to active, so when we interact with the NPCs and we turn on the shop window, we want to set it active and then we want to call the display shop window method on this function and we can pass in the shop system and the player inventory here. So we're going to interact with the NPC, it's going to call this method which is going to turn on the actual game object so it pops up and we can see it and then we're going to call the display shop menu uh, shop window method. That's going to set up the shop system in the player inventory holder, and then it's going to refresh the display. 
which is going to clear any slots that were already there on the panel. Mm -hmm. It will then reset all of the sort of text and the variables, and then it will display the shop inventory, which is going to spawn in our shop system prefab. It's going to instantiate them under the uh, scroll list that we set up on the left hand side. And then it should initialize the shop slot with the item. So let's see if that actually works. So let's hit play. And before we do that, we need to set up some stuff, obviously. Uh, I always forget to do that. Let's go to our prefabs. We've got our shopping list item UI, and you can see that we've now got all of these um, fields that we need to fill in. So drag in the item sprite, item name, item count. We don't need to do anything with the assigned item slot, but we can drag in the add item to cart button as well as the remove from cart button. Okay, so hopefully we've not missed something. We probably have. Let's hit play and just see what happens and see in which way it breaks. So let's go over here. So this is one of our NPCs. We can open it. Oh, and there you go. I'm surprised that worked first time. So we've got our cogs, which are worth 1G. Our health potions, which cost 100G. And our sword items, which he's got one of, they cost 100G as well. Um, currently, I've got no way to close the panel, uh, which is a bit of a, an oversight. So let's uh, come out and go back in here. This has got our sword. So we've got 10 of them at the sword shop. And then we can come over here. We can access the potion shop and we've got the poison potion and the health potion and okay i know this was a bit of a shorter video but i'm going to leave this one here because in the next video we're going to set up the actual shopping cart system and there's a lot of quite like dense kind of stuff we need to do uh, involving kind of like the marking up of the items um so i'd rather do that in its own separate video to try and keep that one concise but hopefully you liked this video uh all of the kind of series that Doing this shop system is already available over on patreon.com forward slash danpos along with the project files. So if you don't want to wait a week for the next part, feel free to head over to the Patreon. And if you support me there, you'll get access to the videos kind of early because they're, they're all done and filmed. I'd just like to take a minute to thank all of my patrons. On screen now, we can see the 10,000 XP tier, which is a sector sweep. And I want to thank all of the 4,000 XP tier members as well. If you need any help with this video or any of the other videos in this series, leave a comment below or head over to the Discord server where you should be able to get an answer from me there. And in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.